All right, I was gonna make a different video, but I'm not sure if you guys can hear me, but I got sidelined with another radiator issue. So I had my passenger side fan, this one right here, actually puncture my last radiator. I actually have it in the trunk, but um, it punctured the radiator and let all the water, not all the water, but it let enough water out to where I knew I had to get another one. Um, so I got another one and unfortunately this one was has that nipple there but it doesn't really matter i already got it all taken care of and it works it doesn't overheat it actually works pretty well um but i did get a trans cooler on here a 40k i got an fittings there at the bottom there they run through the bottom top just like where, well, except the stock one was right there, but this one runs in the middle. Uh, they run through there, run all the way back to the transmission. So from the transmission up to the cooler, everything's new. Wish I could have done that with the engine, but uh, I guess I'll just have to wait because they're new. I just put them in the last time I put the uh, new radiator in, so it's been about a year and a half. Um, but so far, so good. However, I did find that my fans were not turning on. So this passenger side fan is actually not from this car. I got it from a 96. Uh, one of my buddies gave uh, traded me for it. Uh, that uh, driver's side fan is mine, but they weren't turning on. So I went over here to the fuse box and I took these out, inspected them, because these two are for, it shows it right here, for primary fan, I believe, and secondary. Uh, cooling fan so they look good but this one was burned out this one is for also the secondary fan which technically is my driver's side fan but they're they're wired up very confusingly i'm gonna have to reprogram those but this is secondary fan this is primary fan relay uh my primary was good which is my secondary technically uh secondary well technically my primary secondary doesn't turn on secondary primary works this one was burned out so i swapped them my primary turns on so i got two new ones which is that part number right there and all these other fuses work fine i tested them they all work fine so i traced it back to the relays if, if this relay for the passenger side still doesn't work um then it's going to be the fan motor that's burned out somehow or it's my wiring but actually that's so this one is technically the one that's supposed to turn on with the, uh, with the engine uh, at a certain temperature. So let me actually get in here and turn on the AC and see if it works. So if it turns on, then it's the relay. It was the relay that didn't work. If it doesn't turn on, then it's going to be the fan motor. Yeah, so it didn't turn on. Uh, AC works, but it's kind of going to be unreliable but I guess it's either going to be the fan motor uh, or the wiring like I said so I'm going to have to do a test with that with my original one although I really don't want to leave my original one on there because it sits way too close to the radiator and this one you can see it sits a good distance back from the radiator just like the driver's side one so I'm very comfortable with this one but obviously it doesn't turn on uh, so I'm going to just wait here to kick uh, the fans to kick, well hopefully the main fan to kick on, uh, it should be good. But I can't even remember what video I was supposed to do on this car, I was supposed to do something on it. I think probably like some, yeah honestly I don't even remember, but I was going to do something on it, this happened, so I came back from Meek Madness out in Oxnard, and then I took the car out a couple days later, or like a week later, and that's when it happened. I didn't even I didn't even notice until I got home. I parked it, and it was just leaking the coolant out. And thank God it happened when I was already home, instead of you know somewhere where I would have been stranded. But so far so good. I mean, I had it sitting for about two weeks until I could finally you know work on it. I took I took a break from it just from all the work and time I put into into it. Uh, but it, it, I took it out. I, I did not have to monitor the transmission fluid, some of the engine because that, all that stuff leaked out and then that bottom, 
that bottom line down there. Uh, I left it, I left it, you know, just there, and then it leaked a bunch of fluid. So actually, let me leaked a bunch of it onto my concrete. So it was right here. So all that right there is the transmission fluid that leaked out. Some cooling, but mostly transmission fluid it just kept leaking out. So I had to uh, monitor that when it was hot, make sure it wasn't overheating. And it seems to be pretty good now. Uh, but filling it back up. Taking it out test drives, make sure it doesn't overheat. The water stays a little bit low, which is kind of weird. I've already put quite a bit into it. Uh, approximately a gallon came out and I put a gallon back in and I had an issue where it kept spewing the water out and it just I couldn't get it right until I let it through the thermostat which you should do regardless but I did it through the reservoir first but I think there was a lot of air in the water pump which is why it wouldn't want to work and surely enough it works pretty good now I just figure out the issue with the fans and reprogram them to where it's not going to burn out my a different fan that doesn't need to be you know that doesn't need to be unnecessarily ran and typically these should be ran with they shouldn't be running all the time my fans run all the time which was bad i mean good if i don't know it's, it's it for me i don't i don't like it not anymore if they're running all the time that i will run into the issue where maybe that fan is gonna somehow get so much pressure it's gonna hit the radiator again that kind of scarred me uh, i'm a little nervous every time i drive it on the highway but right now this one is off this one's gonna be off the one that actually hit the fan last time i mean it's not this fan but on this side uh that one should be kicking on any any second here um but yeah like i said i have that to do with, uh, with the fans and pretty much I, I'm still doing little by little I have pretty much everything squared away with what I wanted to do uh, drivetrain wise um, I did also do a Corvette servo on the transmission so the transmission yeah there we go fan just kicked on for the relay or, well at least the, that relay working fine that one I don't know what's wrong with it um, so I did do a fluid exchange on the transmission, the Corvette servo, and then the AN fittings. And obviously this uh, trans cooler runs a lot better. And then I also did do a 3000 uh, stall. So that stall is actually, it's actually really good because I'm not sure if you guys can hear me, but, uh, oh, and then I also put in, finally put in the hood insulator. I don't know if I put it on the right way. Um, I hope I did. But I did do the 3000 stall. I went through, what was the brand? Uh, they're down They're down in uh, Thousand Oaks, California. Um, I'll have to put the brand in the description. I totally forgot, forgive me for that. But uh, I did do a 3000 stall. It works amazing. When you step on it, it immediately shoots up to that 3000 RPMs. Uh, the power's right there. And then the Corvette servo, you know, it helps the transmission shift a little bit better i did my plan was to rebuild it completely get a shift kit and all that stuff get a i was shooting for about a 26 to 2800 stall i went you know the guy recommended me a 3000 stall he i believe if i'm not mistaken he has one of these cars or he has a lot of people asking him about these cars and he recommended me a 3000 and so far i love it although the rpms do run a little bit high in town but it's not bad i don't drive this car a lot uh, especially with these gas prices but um, I do I do love it and it makes this it makes this car a lot more fun to drive uh, the only thing that I will say is that the 373s are probably gonna be unrealistic for me because I do a lot of highway driving and if I were to leave that 3000 stall throw in the 373s it's gonna run the rpms way too high for my liking uh, so the 3000 stall raised them up pretty good um, so I, I feel like it's at a perfect uh, range right now so I, I i love it and yeah so that's what i did so in the last month i believe i don't think to my 
don't think I've done anything else. I just cleaned up the engine bay a little bit when I before I went to Ink Madness uh, last month. So just gonna monitor the water and the fluids here, but that's pretty much it. I guess another update that I had to do because I got sidelined, sidetracked with the uh, radiator again. But so far so good. Engine's healthy, thank God. It was just the radiator that kind of upset me, but I do have an issue with my actual steering shaft. So I don't want to stick my hand in there and move it around because it's going to be super hot, but if I go in there and actually like move it side to side, it actually moves. It shouldn't move. At least I think it shouldn't. So I'm either debating to go with the uh, with that Jeep steering shaft uh, mod, and then I have a I have an original 90 uh, original gearbox from a '96 that I bought off uh, Impala SS parts from uh, Georgia. So I have that just waiting there, and then I might just send this one to get rebuilt. Out at I believe their name is Lee Power Steering or something like that. I think they're also in California. So there's a lot I still need to do, at least with the steering, not engine-wise. I think engine-wise, I'm pretty much done. Uh, transmission, maybe in the future, I'll definitely rebuild that, kind of make it a little bit better. But so far, so good. I'm just trying to keep this car from giving me any more problems. But you know, that's it for now. I mean, just wanted to give, give a quick update and. If I do remember about that video, I'll try to make it as soon as I can. Uh, I'm definitely trying to make as many as I can on these cars because there's not too many videos on these cars on how-tos. Uh, I might make a how-to video on this, on the windshield cow because I do have one that's uh, waiting for me because this one wasn't really painted right, so I might have to strip this one down and paint it because this one's clear-coated. I, I didn't ask for this to be clear-coated. I asked for it to be the same color as the car, not clear-coated, so just black because it was kind of faded. So then the Mako ended up painting it, which was ridiculous. And then they painted my uh, wiper arm as well. So I might, I know there's a, there's two, there's two other wiper arms you could get off like a Buick, the Saber or something like that, that you can get them and they'll actually like, cause these you can't, you can't pop them up. Like if you're washing the car and you wanted them to stay up, you can't. Uh, so I'm definitely gonna do that. And just little things here and there. Uh, get it looking nice. And yeah, that's pretty much it for now. Hopefully I'll bring out that next video pretty soon.